Welcome to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Earth, the Chief Architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support experts in living well and doing good around the world. Predominantly speakers, authors, coaches, internet marketers, those that are really living a good life, but are also helping others live a great life. And we have an expert here today. Her name is Cherie Ande. Welcome to the show, my friend. Nice to meet you. It is great to have you on. Heard a lot about you, but we'll get into that. What we'll talk about a little bit is your past. How did you get here? Because I know your story is so powerful. Well, um, the reason I chose this profession of uh, love, sacred sexuality, and relationship coach is that I was raised in a dysfunctional adopted home. Mm -hmm. And I learned early on that there were a lot of people who were not very honest with themselves and therefore couldn't be honest with others mm -hmm. about you know their desires who they were and I also saw them using their energy in ways that were not helpful mm -hmm. and because of or that healthy. Or, he or healthy yeah yeah and because of that it kind of got me into a negative spiral and I ended up attracting a bunch of unhealthy relationships mm -hmm. that so that that kind of spurred me on my path mm -hmm. to growth and the inspiration to help others to have better, healthier relationships. So now this is like going through like your teens and like when did it kind of start to evolve for you? Like when were you making good decisions and better choices? Well, shortly after <clears throat> I was 23, I uh, was able to meet my mother, um, okay. my birth mother. I know mother. your mom very well. Yeah, Charlene. Yes, Charlene yeah. was actually sitting right there. Yeah. You know, lovely lady. Fantastic author, by the way. Yeah, she's so yeah. inspirational. And oh, yes. She really gave me someone to look up to. And yeah. through her and my grandmother, they got me into some really helpful coaching and therapy. Oh, cool. And that got me to see the cycles that I had sort of perpetuated and learned from the early programming um, mm. in the negative environment. So, Do you believe life is for us or to us? <laughs> Sorry? Do you believe life is for us or to us? Oh, I think it's for us. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So maybe if you look at all those, that dark phase, you know, would you be doing what you're doing now in your profession if it wasn't for that? Well, of course not. No, yeah. I don't. I don't really have any regrets or any poor me's about it. Like yeah. I, so no victim role. No, I, I kind of no try to. No blame game. No, I kind of try to gloss over it. Yeah. But but it does make me who I am today, and mm -hmm. I am grateful for all of those experiences mm -hmm. because they were learning, and I was able to become more compassionate and now I have some gifts and skills that I can share with other people. So of all the coaching practices you can pick, okay, I mean personal development is such a broad spectrum, right? You went into love and sexuality, you know, talk to us about that. Well, back to honesty. Um, Are you always honest? I'm honest more than, I'm going to say 90% of the people on the planet. Okay, good. good. And. Um, I have learned a couple of times that sometimes it's not my place to be honest. Mm. You know, like sometimes 
That's Some, an interesting way you said that just now. Yeah, sometimes That's intriguing it, it's how you just, just said really, that. That not, was really it's not our wise. place to always yeah. uh, speak someone else's truth for them. Uh, a lot of people well aren't. Said. Well said. A lot of people aren't ready, mm -hmm. and I learned that very early on to sort of be discerning about what to say and when. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well said. Yeah. yeah thank you. You got to speak to people, I guess, on a level of intelligence and experience, and, and uh, you know capabilities that they have versus that you have. And empathy. And empathy. Yeah. yeah. It's a different journey than yours, right? They're on their own journey. That's really correct. somewhat understand the journey. You know, we can never understand anyone else's journey fully, but really to really take a look and see kind of where they're at experientially. So really when people are ready mm -hmm. to sort of look at themselves and want to take a next step and have more growth in their life, better love, better mm -hmm. relationships, that's when I want to work with people. I love it. So when you say when they're, when they're ready to take a look at themselves, what does that mean to you? Well, if we're not honest with ourselves, and it is sometimes a very hard thing to do because our society promotes a lot of blame mm -hmm. uh, and shame and guilt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, fitting in with the crowd. Mm -hmm. So... We all want to belong. That's right. Right? So it, it's just... Um, really getting in touch with who we are mm -hmm. and wanting to grow to the next level, like seeing what things are not working mm -hmm. and what things you want to change. Now, do you work with both women and men? I do. Mm -hmm. um, primarily so far, it's been mostly women. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of coaching with women and a lot of courses specifically for women. Mm -hmm. um, I do have some couples and some men that I have worked with. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very cool. What does your family life look like now? Well, I have two grown daughters. Oh, very good. And, um, How young are they? They're 27 and 29. Oh, very good. Very and good. my youngest has made me a grandmother, so I have two oh, yeah, yeah. grandsons. Very cool, very yeah. cool. I have four children myself, so. Lovely. Not a granddad yet. Well, it's, it's fun. I bet. It's fun. And I, I, I feel very fortunate, generation. too, because I have really open and honest relationships with my children. They're very That's amazing. Me too. lovely, down-to-earth, mm -hmm. and intelligent what do they do? young ladies. What, 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 what kind of path in life did they take with career? Well, right now, my youngest is a mom. Okay. Her yeah. kids yeah, are yeah. still her young. Young. And yeah. my oldest uh, was a personal trainer and okay. a fitness model. And very good. I did that. And now she is a real estate agent. Oh, right on. And just became a broker. Very cool. Good for her. Mm -hmm. Must be proud of her. I am. I'm proud awesome. of them both. So well, who inspires you outside of, you know, your children and your mom, obviously? Like, is there anyone that you look up to, like, in the, in the personal development world or actors, actresses, philanthropists, anyone that inspires Sheree? I've had a lot of spiritual teachers um, that have inspired me, like uh, different musicians. Yeah. I have... Uh, been very inspired by a lot of poets and okay, lyrics. Cool. I also yeah. do writing do to do help me. Do you do spoken word and poetry? I and, do. I yeah. do a bit of that as well. I love I, it. So I write. And I'm a big fan as well. I've done some curtain. Yeah. Where do you see Sheree in that same five years? In five. What's a perfect day look like in five years? A perfect day. <laughs> A perfect day is everything's automated. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of AI going on. And <laughs> bring me my coffee and <laughs> no, chai tea. <laughs> it rains at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go outside and it's just beautiful and you get to enjoy nature. You get yeah. to have some time for self-reflection, for taking care of yourself fully and completely, and then doing what inspires you to help others and help the world. I love it. Now, I know you're big on sexual energy and teaching people about sexual energy, and there's also like creative energies, all different kinds of energies. Why would you say sexual energy, you know, is so important and compared to some of the other energies that, you know, you could teach about, like creative energy? Well, sexual energy is a form of creative energy, but it's, in my opinion, more powerful. It's the energy that creates babies. Mm. So it creates life. Mm -hmm. And when we are in that orgasmic state, mm -hmm. we are basically fulfilling a desire to be in union. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with universe, all that is, yeah. usually <laughs> with all that is, but if you're with a partner, hopefully with your partner. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. And now you said you were actually teaching couples? Yes. To That's kind of cool. To that have must more be intimacy. Neat. Have more intimacy, mm -hmm. yeah, with some success? Yes, yes. I have a, a workshop called uh, Sacred Touch workshop and snuggle party. Oh, I love it. So if you were to give, let's say, three nuggets of wisdom to our viewers, what would you give 
based on sexual energy and how they can enhance their own life and relationships. Care to share quickly? You got about 30 seconds. I would tell them to focus on their breathing, to come into fully present and have good eye contact with their partner, to have some eye gazing going on. I love it. Make Love for Peace Project. Tell us about that quick. Well, it's uh, using that sexual energy to come together as a group in your own private space to raise that vibration to help make the world a better place. So like a Tupperware party style kind of like? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's no. like group meditation but okay. more intensified. <laughs> I love it. Cherie, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. And thank it's you. been an honor. This is the Dynamo Show. I am James Erd, and as you can see, we have all these different types of experts coming from all different niches across the board. Please stay tuned, and we are going to be back with our next guest. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Earth, the chief architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. This is episode 46, and we are going to keep things going with Joshua Lombardo Bodima. How's it going? Yes, 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 my friend. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I know me. we just recently met. You know, it was at the uh, Haste and Hustle event. That's right. That was such a great event, wasn't it? Incredible. Yeah. Oh, wow. So many great entrepreneurs, you know, everything from startups all the way to gurus like Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. And some really, really great talent. So let's talk a little bit about your past. Let's talk about before you got into this, you know, entrepreneurial self, you know, doing really well and getting all this press, you know, there was a story. To yeah. start when maybe you were in your teens, twenties. Yeah, um, I think everybody like when they're growing up, they they're trying to figure out what they want to be, and especially n nowadays, uh, you know, everybody's trying to figure out who they are at their core, what they want to do with their mm -hmm. life. You know, are they going to school? Or are they what are they taking? Where are they going? So, um, for me, I, I always I actually didn't even realize that um, I had a passion for business. Mm -hmm. um, actually, growing up, I wanted to be uh, an actor. So, okay, um, right on. So I did a lot of acting, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then when it came time... You did time, some work in the acting field? Uh, a little bit? Not, not anything substantial, yeah. but, uh, but I, I enjoyed it. So, yeah. like, I did, like, some, some plays and some... So Drama few, class. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, just fun stuff. So, very good. Um, something that I was very passionate about, right? Yeah. And um, then when it came time to go to college, I was actually looking, and I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. And I mm -hmm. think that's what a lot of youth are faced with. You know, I don't really, you know, like some, a lot of people, I think they don't have like a, a clear passion or direction True. that they want to go. True. And that's tough. Because that, that can be a curse. Yeah. You know, that's hard for a lot of kids. For sure. And so yeah. what I did was I looked, I actually looked at what I had been taking mm -hmm. and because I, it, it, it wasn't clear to me. Yeah. But then when I actually looked at what I had uh, been taking in school and what I had excelled at and really what my best marks were in um, was business. Nice. Um, so then I was like, well, maybe I'll take business in, yeah. in college, and I went to school for that. And then I'm your classic entrepreneur. I actually dropped out of college. <laughs> ah, and, yeah. um, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I uh, because I, it came time. You weren't a raver, were you? A raver? Yeah. Uh, not so much. No, not why so did much. you drop out? Uh, to do business. Okay, so, good. So I was faced with a with an opportunity to either. Um, continue with schooling or pursue an opportunity to start my own company. Yeah. Uh, so I started my, my first company when I was uh, 18. Oh, good for um, you. And that branched off. What of, was that company? Tell us about that company. Uh, there's a property beautification company. Yeah. So um, and it was uh, primarily direct sales and service. So okay. I had a job when I got one of my first jobs, not my first jobs, but um, an early job of mine was doing direct sales. Yeah, me like too. Like direct sales, door to door. Isn't it the best? Hustling. Though? Like when you look back, what kind of skills you oh. received from that? You don't I get sold a, knives. Do you remember? Cuckoo yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that. Yeah, I still yeah. have them. Yeah. yeah. So I ran around uh, doing door-to-door uh, -door aerations and driveway ceiling oh, and all that good. stuff. So right you know, labor and sales. Yeah. There's no better training uh, yeah. to be an entrepreneur, to be in sales, anything like that, than door-to-door. -to -door. Totally. Um, so I, agree with you. I excelled at that, and um, 
and I actually started to really enjoy it, just talking to people every day and yeah. starting with zero every single day and then creating results yeah. from there. And you get paid what you're worth. That's right. Um, so from there, um, uh, the, the gentleman that I was working for at the time uh, started to franchise out um, these, these businesses. And uh, so I started that, for that first company when I was, so started in sales at 16, bought it when I was 18. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, basically, I started with with a small amount of savings. I begged the bank for a line of credit. Yeah. So, f like fifteen thousand dollar line of credit that I begged for when I was eighteen years old, and over eight years turned that into a multi million dollar business with that's amazing twenty thousand customers, eighty staff, that sort of thing. I love it. So, outside of business, I'm sure you're passionate about other stuff. You know, for right sure. now I hear a lot of passion for business, but what else do you do? Um, I, I'd say I'm most passionate. Um, about, it, it, it's tough, I can't really hone it into one certain thing, but the, the thing that I'm most passionate about is growth. Growth. So yeah. for me... Personal development, self-growth kind of yeah, thing. Like yeah, like just, just stepping outside of your comfort zone and pursuing something new, yeah. uh, you know, uh, l learning something new. So you won't really ever s see me sitting in front of a TV or yeah, you're always any, learning. No, you're playing something, video games. Something I don't, productive. Yeah, if anything, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to something or watching something yeah. to learn how to do it. Um, you know, so some of my current passions, uh, you know, I'm taking some, some culinary classes, oh, learning Spanish, I want to nice. pick up the guitar again, so on the personal Very side good. of things, just things that add to my being, like who I the am. the work-life balance. Yeah. Do you, do you focus on that? Do you focus on I mean, guys like us, we tend to fall into workaholism a For little sure. bit, you know, when you're just so passionate about business and growth and making money, yeah. you know, but to balance it out with that, you, would you say you have an equal balance, a fair balance, a healthy balance? It's, it's one of the most important things and I know it's like, it's a, it's a buzzword and like people talk yeah. about it a lot, but the, the, the thing is, is I've been there, I've worked seven days a week, 16 hour days, mm -hmm. like, like for, you know, nine months Ten straight, years. no yeah. days off, right? Yeah. Like, and just grinded. And, mm. um, and that's, that's be part of being in a seasonal business, first of all. Yeah. But at the same time, eventually you can burn yourself out or you look back and, you know, I had done that for about eight years and I look back and I'm like, wow, I missed out on a lot of yeah. things. And so moving forward, I actually wanted to, like this, my company that I founded now, mm -hmm. um, you know, I build in for not only for myself, but for my staff, that work-life balance. And it's super key because totally. you, you actually get more productivity, productivity out of it. Sick days, yep, you know, exactly. better morale. You're just happier. Let's talk about Go Ranch. Sure. Yeah. Okay, tell us about Go Ranch, you know, and the philosophy behind it. Yeah. So uh, Go Ranch is basically um, a, a shop on wheels. We're, 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 our tagline is we bring auto repairs and more right to your door. Nice. So we've been called the Do Uber of mechanics. Auto? Yeah. Oh, good, yeah. good. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'll be calling you. I, yeah. live, I live in a busy parking garage. Perfect. <laughs> we'll be there. So, yeah, we send certified mechanics to your home or work to fix your car. Yeah. Um, nice thing about us is we've built uh, the technology so you can go on our website, get instant transparent prices, uh, book a mechanic in right then and there. So, you know, rather than spending up to like six hours bringing your car to a shop or a dealership back and forth, yeah. you can spend as little as like two minutes of mm -hmm. your time mm -hmm. to actually get something booked. And then you spend a minute, like when we get there, you throw them the keys yeah. and, and that's it, you're Bingo. done. So there like you three minutes in, is your time commitment now. Uh, plus we come in 10 to 20% cheaper than the shops. That's cool, that's cool. Now, I know you've been getting a lot of press lately. Yeah. Why? Um, it's, it, we're, we're in this day and age where convenience is key. Everybody is Agreed. being pulled in a hundred different directions, right? Truth, yeah. uh, everybody wants your time, everybody wants your attention and um, you know, we're, we're running on lower and lower time. So mm -hmm. the automotive industry, it hasn't changed in years. It hasn't been innovated in years. No. So I saw yeah. a need because I had the need. I was yeah. a busy consumer. I also had a fleet of my own. Yeah. And I'm like, nobody's doing this. No reputable companies are doing this. Mm. Um, so I've, I founded Go Wrench and we haven't looked back. And Where does uh, it range? Like, where do you. Uh, where, so where we, range? we service most of Ontario right now. Okay, that's great. Um, and we're we expanding North? more and more. I mean, by the time this film's, uh, the, yeah. the viewers see this, we could be across Canada, maybe Amazing. the US. So. I love it. So we're, we're currently scaling so operations. So you have U.S. Uh, intentions. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Different market altogether. For sure, absolutely. Much bigger market. Yeah, much, yeah, bigger, much market. bigger, but it's, it's just about growth and it's about, it's about bringing value. If it works in Canada, it'll work in the U.S. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. If you make it awesome. here, yeah, you can make it anywhere. What's your so. next challenge? What's the, what's the next on the list? 
Um, well, basically, my next challenge, um, like personally, is just continue with growth. Uh, yeah. I want to continue learning. I want to bring, like everything that I do is focused upon bringing value to anybody that interacts with me or my company. I love it. Um, so yeah. I want to bring as much value, whether that's staff, whether yeah. that's vendors, whether that's customers, mm. or whether it's friends and family. and yeah, Humanity I, in general. Exactly, mm. exactly. So let's do this. Let's uh, Rapid fire, okay, three nuggets of wisdom, maybe share with our audience. You know, for some startup entrepreneurs, what would you say? Startup entrepreneurs, I would say um, start now. Uh, you know, I was actually uh, talking to a friend of mine the other day and I said, a startup is, is not like creating a masterpiece and releasing it. Uh, Michelangelo said when he carved the statue of David, uh, he didn't, somebody said, how did you carve this? And he just said, I simply took away what wasn't David when he was carving this block. Oh, nice. So, yeah. you know, yeah. when you start a startup, it's like having that big block and you're simply carving away. And so release as fast as possible mm -hmm. because you don't know what the masterpiece is gonna be like. Mm -hmm. But, and then get early feedback, early, or, you know, like get as much early um, input as you mm -hmm. can because your customers, your vendors, your friends, your family, it's all gonna help you carve your own masterpiece into what your business is gonna be. Awesome. And yeah, so, so awesome. start fast, iterate, and just be on your toes and, and listen. I listen to what it. people want. I love it. One last nugget for those who want to change the world. For those who want to change the world, um, find something you're passionate about and don't underestimate yourself because changing the world doesn't mean changing seven billion people. It could be changing somebody's world. It could be one person. You know, and I think if we all focused on just the people around us, it could be, you know, smiling at somebody, making their day, giving them a compliment, showing kindness, compassion, respect, um, uh, you know, bringing value. You know, so it. start off with one person, change their world, figure out how you can make that two people, then five people, then ten, then a hundred, then a thousand, and you you make it as big as you want to make it, and you change the world for as many people Bingo. as you want to. I love yeah. it. Awesome. And especially you. There we go. <laughs> I'm here with Joshua. This is the Dynamo Show. We will be back right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Earth, the chief architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support experts in living well and doing good around the world. And when I say world, we actually have a global traveler here with us today, Lorraine Simpson. Welcome to the show. Hey, James. I am such a fan of travel. You know, and we're, we're going to get right into travel. We're going to talk a little bit about personal travel. We'll talk about business travel, and then we'll talk about the business of travel. Right. But before we do that, I would love to learn a little bit more about your story, because I know it's a very powerful one, and we can learn a lot from the nuggets, you know, the victories and the defeats, but we'll go back when you're maybe a little girl and start there. Oh, gosh, right that way far back. back? Way yeah. back. We got some time. Oh, okay. Get comfortable. So, uh, oh, first struggles. I always find that struggles are what make you who you are. Would you truth. agree? Truth, truth. I uh, lived in Hong Kong when I was young. I also lived in Cyprus. That's a Hong Kong accent. Um, Hong Kong, I don't know about Hong Kong. It tends to be a sort of an expat accent. Yes. A bit of mixture in there, you know. Yeah. And I lived in Cyprus. And my first experience of a struggle, I would say, is when Cyprus decided that the people of the country who were half Greek, half Turkish, mm. were going to fight oh and divide the country in half. Oh my. So we lived on an area of an Air Force base that was not connected to the main Air Force base, and it was a family area. Mm. So we had to get to the main Air Force base, and in order to do that, they were shooting people all around us. Oh my. So I remember How as young were you first, at that point? Just I think it was about curiosity. nine. Nine, okay. And I remember the Dramatic. first thing of, of, you know, when you're driving and you're hearing pop, 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 and you know that that's gunfire around you, 
It's, it's a little bit scary. And it's funny because now I don't like gunfire on TV. I oh, will actually oh, eh? turn a TV off. I really, don't like, eh? and I don't like also fireworks. Yeah, Same yeah, thing, yeah. that pop, pop, really? pop, you know. Wow, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. A, it was a sort of a scary, and I think it, it changed the way impression. that I thought in the future. And my father was just in Cyprus because it's still a divided country. So mm -hmm. you still have Turkish on one side and Greece on the other side. Mm -hmm. And it's a very popular Greece destination in the south of mm -hmm. Cyprus. It's a gorgeous country. Mm -hmm. Beautiful a lot beaches, of British, yeah. beautiful beaches. And yeah. a lot of British people go there because yeah, it's yeah, not that far. And That's right. it's one of those places that is still divided. And my father said that there's a, still a lot of military presence in the north where he really, was. Eh? Yeah. Is there a lot of like physical resistance and, and violence still? Or? No, nothing. No, just more nothing. Just the underlying kind underlying of? Underlying. Yeah. And, and the, the, the military really never goes away, there. especially with like the old school, like the, the people that yeah. have lived through that kind of stuff, like yeah. the elders. You know, it's, it's difficult to, to turn over that new leaf and yeah. to it's, really begin to true. accept when you've been through something like that, especially if you've possibly lost somebody to those pop, pop, yes. pops. Yes, you and know. you lost, a lot of people lost their homes and lost their everything. They lost their belongings, they lost everything, because anybody who was from Turkey mm -hmm. living in the now southern Greek side mm -hmm. had to leave everything and move to the north. And, and anybody north, who uh, lo lived in the north and had Vice to move versa. to the south. Oh, wow. So they lost a lot. So where did you guys go after that? So then we went to England and mm -hmm. I lived in a family where it, it wasn't a very good environment for a kid to grow up in. So I really grew up very fast. And okay. I became uh, um, a, a person who worked from a very young age. I mean, in those okay. days, I mean, I'm 52 now, so in those days, you could work very yeah. young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think at 12 and 13, I had a pretty solid job. Yeah. And the day I turned 16... What did you do? What was your first gig? Then? Well, I lived very close to a theme park, and I worked in the theme park. So oh, I was making ice cream sundaes. Nice. It didn't do me any good for my future because I still like ice cream sundaes oh, now. Oh, me too. I'm a haagen <laughs> like enthusiast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. A cookie oh. dough dynamo. <laughs> we, we, we would make something <laughs> called a Knickerbocker Glory. A Knickerbocker Glory. Yep. Tell me about a Knickerbocker Glory. It was about yay high. Yep. And you'd have jello and ice cream and cream and more jello and different flavors. And totally then cream on the top. And oh, oh my goodness. It's divine. So oh, I used wow. to make those all day long. You and got me daydreaming right now. And I earned 67 cents an hour. Nice. Not the time, it shows Very how good. old I am, right? What would be the equivalent to that in today's world? Oh gosh, I don't know. I think they're probably about $10 now, or 10 pounds shakes. now. Yeah. Really, okay. eh? Oh, wow. They're expensive. Okay, that wasn't yeah. bad. Anyway, not bad for a kid. No, so I left know? home, and I became uh, sort of older than I really was. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. lied to the person of the apartment because I was only 16 and told them, I have a job, here's my job, and which was true. Yep but I was younger than I'd said. And I remember lying in my bed the very first night in this very cold, wasn't really what you would call an apartment, it was sort of a, more of a room yeah. with a bed in it and a little thing that was called a kitchen. And, uh, <laughs> a, kitchenette. And, and a kitchenette type of thing in the same room and, and a chair and, and thinking, gosh, I'm really so lonely. And I vowed then that I would do something good and I would great. make some money and I would take care of myself and I have done. Very and good. I've gone back to my parents years later and I made a lot of money when I lived in Hong Kong again. Yeah. And I've gone back to my parents and I've you made peace with my parents but I've also paid for things for them, you know, and sent yeah. them things and, and been able to give you. back and said, Very you know nice. what? It wasn't necessarily the best upbringing. However, mm -hmm. um, I, I appreciate what you did because you made me who I am. And, and it means that I can actually be a strong person because of what you gave me at the time. So That's powerful. It's, uh, Very powerful. It was good. Where did the travel bug come in? I think because my father was in the Air Force, we got to travel a lot more than most as, as yeah. young people. So you just got used to so, that from, yeah. from early feet. on. Yeah. Never wow. in one place for very long. So where have you visited? I've been to 92 countries. That's all? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> and lots of places within okay, those countries. Okay, tell me countries. about your top three. What are your top three countries? Well, Rapid fire. Oh, gosh. I love the Maldives. Yeah. I think the Maldives Ooh. will be disappearing in the next 20 they look, years. They look good on the pictures. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And disappearing? Like sinking, yes, because sinking? Yes, the, because the uh, water is rising, and they think oh that the Maldives will be gone in my. 20 years. So I love the Maldives. I think that I the Maldives is then. just gorgeous. I, I think you should get married there. And, oh. um, and then I love, love, love Italy. Yeah. 
Yeah. My heart is in I love Italy. Italy too. I just I love Val Gardena, love Santa Cristina, so uh, the Dolomiten in the mountains down in the south. I yeah, go skiing, skiing there. there. Yeah. I, I just I just love the culture and I love the people and and the laid back atmosphere. And I also like the fact that everywhere you go, people will invite you to their mm. homes and they and they have just warm hearts and and, and the food is obviously oh, fantastic. I love um, Ferraris. Oh, Ferraris. So. <laughs> I, don't yes. think. I, I like, love Lamborghinis. <laughs> I rented a two-seater smart car and oh. went to Italy alone a few years, uh, two years ago, I think now. And I was single at the time. I just wanted to go away on a vacation yeah. on my own. So I rented a two-seater smart car yeah. and drove all around Tuscany. Those little oh, ones. Oh, yes, I had a great time. They're fun, eh, with the oh, paddle it was shifting? wonderful. Oh, it was yeah. fun. They actually go really quite fast. You can actually park them like this in Europe, I think. Oh, yeah. Like, you, like yeah. most cars are parked like this, right? But you can actually park like this. I know. <laughs> it was wild. great. The only problem is I have a bit of a fetish for shoes, so the uh, luggage Likewise. compartment wasn't very big. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> These came from Venice. Oh, very nice. So, uh, very I do nice. love uh, love Italian in, in yeah. shopping and everything. It's oh, just yeah. wonderful. It's sexy. They have just such a, even like, you know, everything. The culture, the, 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 the people, the music. There's a sex appeal about Italy that's just yeah. so attractive, you know? Well, when we were there last year, I took my boyfriend there last year, and I went into the shoe shop. And this lady and I got chatting, mm. and we got chatting about relationships and how wonderful the way that he was treating me at the time. And she's like, oh, I want somebody like that. And we just got chatting. He left the shop, and we were just talking about how we'd met and everything. And she had also lost her husband, and I lost mine recently. And she would, was telling me about her husband and how she feels that her life is over and she's not going to have a chance in life. And we had this long chat, and by the end, when Keith came back into the shop, she was crying, hugging me, and he's like, how much did you buy to make the woman in the shop cry? Oh. But we just had this connection because yeah. we had similar sort of struggles, and yeah. she just and connected, right away. connected and, and I feel like I gave her a bit of hope. We kept in touch? No, no, actually, but she, um, she was just a lovely lady, and I think I left her with a, a glimmer of hope that there's not everything is is all over for her and, and a big commission know. check <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i did have rather large budget and oh i love yes, it yeah in uh, second country so i well, would we got maldives we got italy, italy one more pick maldives. one more maldives um, so third country uh, see I've, I've always enjoyed mexico mexico but i do a lot of destination weddings in mexico and i love that the, the people Maya. yeah yeah beautiful. i have a lot of connections there very good but it, it really changes, you know, with, with time, wherever I am, whatever situation I'm in, and who I'm with. I love it. We're going to talk more about the business of travel that you're in when we get right back. We're going to take a short commercial break, and we will be right back with The Dynamo Show. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. Without further ado, we are going to continue with the business of travel with Lorraine Simpson. Now, let's talk about Keith. Let's talk about kind of how, how, how you got into Canada and, you know, because I think it's such an important part of your story. Yes. So I arrived in Canada in 2005 because mm -hmm. my then husband, father of my two youngest children, uh, had cancer. Mm -hmm. And we had struggled in England, private medical is very expensive. He's Canadian, mm. so we couldn't really continue getting him well on private medical for cancer treatment. It was costing a fortune. We came to Canada, he passed away, had no life insurance, which is something I have learned, and I was left with four children, two in diapers, and no money. What was I going to do? So I stayed in Canada, and I bought myself a home-based travel agency franchise. Hmm. It cost me $15,000 at the time. It was my last pennies, really, but I felt that I could do something with it. And I'm sitting in an unfinished basement with four children, two of which were throwing toys at me over a gate, thinking, gosh, 
how am I going to find people who want to travel in this unfinished basement? And I needed to get out there and to push my way into some sort of marketing opportunity or some way of selling my travel. Mm -hmm. So I decided that with my experience I'd had in Hong Kong of event planning, mm -hmm. that I would go and exhibit at wedding shows. And at the time, nobody really in Canada, or very few, I think it was two companies really, that were dabbling in destination weddings. So I thought, oh, I could do that. In my first year, I sold eight destination weddings. Oh, wow, that's huge. In my second year, I sold 28 destination weddings. Oh, my weddings. goodness. In my third year, I sold 72. And you went on all of them? No, no. no. The, a lot of this was just planning from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea is you arrange it well enough yeah. that the people literally just go and they have their destination wedding and yeah. everything runs smoothly because you've done a good job at home. Wow, know? that's wildly successful. Congrats. But I didn't get very much help from the host agency that I had at the time uh. because they didn't know much about destination weddings. So everything I did, I had to research for myself. Yes. And so eventually, I was doing over 100 weddings a year. And those 100 weddings a year That's was bringing in $4 million in commissions. And I was overwhelmed. And eventually, I sold the company to a large multinational company in Canada. And I sort of semi-retired. I bought myself a little tea room in Jordan and just sat there making scones and tea for wonderful ladies who went to church on a Sunday and, and came to see me. Uh... <laughs> Not so much the Knickerbocker <laughs> glories, but definitely scones with jam and cream and high teas. Yeah. And I sat there thinking, gosh, I really miss the travel business because oh, okay. as much as I enjoyed, I had the bug. Once you've got the travel bug, you've got the bug. That's it. So eventually I went back into it and uh, I was single still. I'd been single a long, long time. Mm -hmm. As you know, not so much now, but mm -hmm. then still single and I just worked. I just went back into the business. But this time, what I now do is I teach people how to be travel agents. Okay. And I've become so my own host. you a new element to it. Exactly, so yeah. I've become my own host now. And I've set up a training program for people to teach them how to become travel agents. And if they're employed, by another company, so a travel company or something, Ontario government will pay between 63 and 80 percent of my educational program for them. So I can teach them That's how great. to be group agents or destination wedding planners or anything sales, space, anything cool. to do with that, and the government will pay for it. So it's win-win for everyone. Hello, yeah. And, and now they join me as, as travel agents or they stay within the company that so they're working So some of them actually working. work with you now. Some of them can oh, join wow. me. If they don't have a host, they can join me. Mm -hmm. And then I then uh, still plan travel, but I plan travel more as just groups, not yeah. just weddings now. Yeah. It can be anything, if you are running a group, it doesn't matter if you're into health and wellness and you want to do a retreat somewhere. I've got one going into Bali. Mm. And it's a stunning location. Ubud is just this very spiritual, wonderful little town above Kuta Beach in, in uh, Bali. And we're going to do a health and wellness retreat there. So in oh, the morning nice. there will be lessons and an yeah. educational program. In the afternoon it'll be all about experience. Oh, great. And we're doing another one in Italy where we go and the morning is classroom, this one is a business one. Morning is classroom, afternoon is experience. One of the days we take e-bikes out, go through three wineries, and have lunch in a trattoria and taste wines, and you're on an e-bike, so it's completely an e okay. Very cool, yeah. very cool. So we do that. And then I do things because I also believe now that it's time to give back. Um, not only do I teach and speak about travel, I love to work with charities. So if I can work with a charity, we've got a group going into Ireland in October. Dublin? And yes, and they're going to, stay, going to go to the K Club. Have you heard of the K Club? No, oh, do This share. is magnificent golf hotel country resort, which okay. is just stunning. And the price tag is pretty high. Yeah. However, 70% of it goes to charity. And the people that are experiencing cool that? that, they what they do is they know that this is going to charity, they get a charitable receipt. Yep. And so it's a way of them connecting with other very high level executives yeah, yeah, yeah. who are on the trip. So there's only 20 people allowed to go. And 
they're it's connecting. Closer it's closer relationships, very personal much. business, I'm sure. Exactly. So yeah. big connections. And financially, it's beneficial to them because it's a way of giving back. It's a charitable receipt, so that they. So can they do get that. a receipt to travel to this, like exactly. you know, five, six, possibly seven star yes. location. Have you been to any exactly. seven star resorts? I've well, or, see, or hotels? officially, there's no real seven star resort. Yeah. The one in in Dubai, the Burj Al Arab, which I have stayed in, yeah. uh, touts itself to be a seven star resort. I've been resort. to two in India. I was at the Sahara Star and uh, the uh, the Trident Oberai, which is the sister hotel oh. to the Taj Mahal. Yeah. But another yes. level of like posh. Oh yes. Like just gorgeous. In I think in Asia as well they do service to another level that we don't appreciate yeah, here. Yeah, they do. And when you You're are right. living, when you go and you, you experience this level of service and you come back to somewhere in North America and you <laughs> stay at a similar, sort of, you think, you know, uh, where's my butler? Uh, 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 I think my uh, uh, children uh, uh, have been ruined. I mean, what do you mean, no jasmine incense? What is What's it? going on? <laughs> where's my pillow <laughs> gift? <laughs> I don't have a pillow gift. What do you mean I don't have a pillow gift? I have to run my own bath? Oh, please. Um, <laughs> There's no rose petals in my bath? <laughs> my, my stepdaughter, so now, um, so uh, you asked me originally uh, uh, about Keith and, and yeah. the, the thing that now I think completes my life is the fact that I have this most amazing man who supports everything I do. Mm -hmm. And you do. His, uh, and you know him, he's, yeah, he is. Lovely and, man. But I very, uh, I'm very, very lucky and he just lets me be who I am and supports me and says, yes, you go off and, 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 and sprinkle How important is that dust. though? Like even, even Nicola, my fiance and I, we have this big picture above our bed and it's a bird cage, but the door is open and the birds are sitting on the outside on the branch. It's, right. it's one of those so things you can do. I'm allowed to do anything I want. Yes, and in fact, I've, I've become very almost pathetic because I've turned from this alpha female businesswoman um, turning over millions of dollars at one point to being this sort of pathetic <laughs> creature of in love and saying, no, I don't want to go there if you can't come. And he's like, don't be ridiculous, just go. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't want to go. Let's, so let's talk about the alpha. Uh, businesswoman for a sec because I know there's a lot of entrepreneurial women that watch this show uh, if you were to share some nuggets with our audience if you were to say three nuggets of wisdom to empower some startup entrepreneur females what would you say so I think struggles are really something that you have to learn from and I was very proud of my son the other day I have a 15 year old son now and he is on the Tim Hortons uh, project. He's on this Tim Hortons camp project. And we, he was helping out, volunteering on the day of the Tim Hortons camp day. And they said, oh, do you want a job? Because he's 15, do you want a job? He goes into the Tim Hortons near us and says, I'd, I'd love a job. And they said, oh, do you have a resume? He said, um, yes. Well, bring us a resume and tell us how to do it. Oh, OK. He turned around to me and he said, what's a resume? And I said, that's exactly my philosophy. Say yes, figure it out later. Because otherwise, if you don't have the power to be able to go out there and say, I can do this. How am I going to do this? No, I can do this. And you have to be strong enough to believe that you can actually go out there and do it, no matter how many struggles you have, no matter how many times you get knocked down and kicked in the curb, you have to turn around and say, ah, that's okay. I can do this. And you've done it. I've done it. Over and over again, and you're still doing it. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. Lorraine Simpson here on the Dynamo Show. I am James Ert, your host. Thank you so much once again for tuning in, and we will see you guys at the next episode.